Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 26th of February and it's almost 10 past 1 in the afternoon. <clears throat> Today's video, I've got a punnet, literally, a punnet of die cast to show you. Not all of these that are in here actually came in the punnet, but I'll show you those. I've got a few others that I want to show you as well. One of which is, two of which are on the floor. Small Britain's tractors over here. Um, I've also got another blue beacon for the collection, so we'll have a look at that as well, and I'll fire that up for you too. Um, but first, I want to talk about my moped as uh, it decided to break down Friday morning, <laughs> half past seven in the morning. Uh, it is running now. The electric start isn't, but the rest of it is. So, what happened is, I obviously got up um, early because I had to go over to Mum's early. And uh, I've got a slow leak on that new tyre. It's just, it's a tubeless tyre and it's not um, sealing on the rim properly. It's leaking somewhere. Just like the rear one did. So, I'm assuming that's why both of those had tubes in. Uh, before they were changed. The old tyres had tubes in. I'm guessing they just couldn't get them to seat on the rims properly. Anyway, so I thought, right, I'll fire, fire up the pad and let it tick over and warm up while I'm pumping up the tyre and getting the gear on and whatnot, which is exactly what I did. Um, and just as I got my gloves on, the engine cut out. It just died and went, Oop. Which it's done a couple of times in the past, especially when it's cold, and it was quite a cold morning, Friday. So I uh, went to press the button, the electric start, and just a faint click. That's all I got from it. Just a little click. Wouldn't do anything. So I thought, right. I can't imagine the battery would be dead already, but that's the sort of symptom it is. So I thought I'll try to kick start, because being an older 50cc moped, it still had a kickstart option on it as well. I kicked it over and the kickstart didn't come back properly. It um, was acting like it was coming back slowly, like it was gummed up or something. Um, and because of that, I was finding it hard to uh, get it. Well, actually, it wouldn't start. And when it did, it would just go burp, 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 and that was it. So. The fact it, it didn't actually feel um, as free as it should have been when I was kicking it down, so I thought, has my engine crapped out on me or something? Because, you know, when I did get it to fire up, it just went blah, 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 and then it coughed, basically. Coughed and splattered, and that was it. <clears throat> so I had to get my stepdad to pick me up that morning. So I spent two days thinking maybe, you know, the bleeding engine has gone on it and it's going to cost more than the bike is actually worth considering I've just thrown like 350 400 quid at it in three new tires because one got vandalized um, <clears throat> I'm 100% certain that tire was vandalized and the fact that I've just found more vandalism on it as well when I was out there this morning I'll come back to that um, yeah, so I was thinking about what should I do with it, should I sell it as spares, repairs, I just got two brand new tyres on it, someone could make use of those. A full tank, well actually I probably wouldn't have sold it with a full, full tank of gas, I'd have probably drained that out, but currently it's got a full tank of gas on it. Um, and everything else was working on it fine until the engine just quit for some reason. Well I thought the engine had quit. So yesterday... Um, I was waiting for Mum to come pick me up because she wanted me to go over and uh, install some lights in the bathroom, some down lighters. And I thought I'd just try it again. And I thought, as the kickstart is a bit sticky for whatever reason, I didn't know if there was a problem with the engine itself or if it was just the kickstart. I thought I'd try it again. So I, went, you know, I had the moped key on me while I was waiting for Mum, so I put the key in it. And I kicked it in such a way so, or oh, I had my foot on the kickstart in such a way so as I kicked it down I could bring it up just as quick. Um, and I did that and I think after the third kick she fired up and idled. 
and she ran fine. And I'm sitting there on the moped, I actually sat on the moped, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> so I thought, well, I can't hear no knocks, bangs, clangs, or anything come from the engine. It sounds perfectly normal. In fact, a knocking sound that was there before this had gone. It's a knocking sound that it had had on a cold start and on low revs only since I bought the damn thing. And now it's not there for some reason. Electric start still wouldn't work, by the way. It was still just a little click. Um, yeah, and it just sat there and oh, so I'm scratching my head like, well, what the hell's going on? There's obviously nothing wrong with the engine like I first thought. That's running fine. I thought it's got to be a problem with the kickstart, so this morning I decided to go downstairs and took some um, tools down with me. Well, it was actually quite simple. All the bolts are um, 5mm Allen head bolts that hold the side casing on. Um, so I was thinking maybe the auto clutch was sticking and causing, you know, enough friction for the kickstart to um, not return properly and maybe for the engine not turn over quick enough for it to start <clears throat> um, I didn't know you know I was just taking guesses basically at what could be wrong so I took the cover off and the kickstart mechanism itself is actually built onto the cover so you don't actually have to take the pedal off um, well actually you do because there is a bolt I just remember there is a bolt hiding under that and it is easier to get to that if you take the pedal off um, but yeah the rest of it is actually built onto the case so you just pop the case off. I thought it's going to have to like slide it over the kickstart shaft, but now it's not built like that. Um, so I got a hold of the output shaft on the engine and just spun that, and I could spin it by hand, perfectly fine. I feel plenty of compression. I thought that part of the bike is absolutely fine. <laughs> so I'm still scratching my head this morning. I'm like, what's going on? And literally, all I did with the kickstart because. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but on the actual shaft for the, your kickstart pedal, it's like a half circle with teeth on it, so it's like half a gear. Um, which then drives another little gear, about that big, which has then got a flat plate on one side, and on that flat plate is like some other teeth, which interlock with the, um, I think it's the clutch mechanism, on the uh, output shaft. And that's how it obviously turns your engine over. <clears throat> um, that actually fell off. But all I literally did, it didn't look that dirty, so I just gave it a little bit of a clean out and just sprayed it all up with some WD-40. Put the, the little gear thing back on. In the orientation I thought it went well. It looks like it would only go on one way anyway. Bolted the cover back on just gave it a light kick with my foot and I actually went down and came back up perfectly fine. And maybe the gear slipped out of alignment, I don't know. The um, little gear that actually meshes with the clutch on the output shaft. Um, but yeah, I pulled in the um, brake lever because you've got to have the brakes in for it to start. Kicked it twice and she fired up. So I shut her off because I had to come back up here because I thought, you know what, I'll go for a ride. So I shut her off, came back up here, grabbed my coat and my helmet and my gloves, went back downstairs, kicked her over first kick and she fired. So uh, I did let her warm up for a bit and went for a ride around town and she rides perfectly fine. <clears throat> so... I've now got a working pen again, but only on the kickstart. I've actually got the battery on charge in here because I want to rule that out before I go, you know, ripping off the start mowers and spending money on start mowers because battery is an easy thing to take off and charge. So that's in the kitchen charging it. I don't know. Friday morning, I used the electric start to start it and it started fine, as far as I can remember. It didn't seem to be um, sluggish. It could have been, so don't take my word for that, it could have been sluggish. Um, and that last start may have been enough, you know, just to drain that battery 
to the point where it doesn't have enough charge in it to fire it up again. That could have all been all the problem was. If my kickstart hadn't stuck, I probably could have still used the ped that day. But obviously, you know, I was thinking the worst. And it's turned out to be something quite simple. <laughs> I mean, with the electric start, it can only be one of two things, really. I mean, I can hear it clicking, so I know all the start button and everything else is working, and the safety mechanism with the brake lever, that's all working, because when I press the button, you can hear it click, but that's all it does. Um, so it can only be one or two things, can't it? It can either be a battery that's not got enough charge, and that might need a new battery, um, or the start motor's locked up on it and no longer works, or just a filthy connection somewhere, bad solenoid. Actually, the fact I'm hearing it click, it can't be a bad solenoid, because that's probably what I'm hearing click. Um, well, I'll find out later this afternoon. I am keeping an eye on the battery. I'm watching the uh, lights on the charger slowly turn on as it uh, charges the battery. And uh, I'll give it another whirl. I'm not really too fussed. It's nice to have the electric start, just for being lazy, but she starts the first kick. Might take two first thing on a cold morning, but to be honest, even before this happened, she would kick on the first kick, or start on the first kick, I should say. So it's not a big issue. It just means I might end up with a bigger right leg than a left leg. <laughs> Actually, she's really easy to kick over. But yeah, all oh, the damage. Yeah, I've noticed on that side, on the left side that there's a crack in the plastic which I know wasn't there before and I didn't put it in there and where the sort of the trim that goes around your seat bucket should lock into that bit of plastic on the side and it's not it's all come out now I know for a fact I've not dropped it I've not knocked it and I've not kicked it or anything like that so I know for a fact it wasn't done by me that's been done by someone else <clears throat> So it would appear someone, either someone online, maybe I've pissed someone off on Facebook, which wouldn't surprise me, or someone in this block has got something against me and keep uh, damaging the bike. Oh, sorry, that was me just kicked the tripod leg. <sighs> so I think I really need to get that in my shed, which means I've got to get those bikes, or at least most of them, the push bikes that is out of that shed and over to mum's which means uh, I need to find some timber or something from somewhere so I can build a lean-to or maybe rather than a lean-to I wonder if my mum and stepdad would let me just put a little 6x4 shed up that side of it because we can get them cheapest chips sometimes they pop up for free I'll, uh, I'll have a word with mum tonight she's going to ring me tonight like she normally does so I'll have a word with her then that would just make life easier than trying to find lumber to build a bloody lean-to with then all I've got to do is to stack the bikes up on end like I do here, I'd probably get half a dozen or more bikes in a little shed like that and that'll do to store them. Because there's enough room there and there'd still be more room on the other side of that to dump, you know, garden grass clippings and whatnot. Yeah, anyway, that's the story about the moped. <laughs> um, I don't even know why that kickstart was um, sticky or sticking for some reason. They don't often do that. Maybe, um, like I said, maybe the gear thing, because there was like a, a bent sort of springy bit of metal on that as well. Maybe that just come out of alignment for some reason, which is weird because I barely ever use it. Although I am actually glad I had to take that cover off because I did notice a number of the bolts were loose. Not all of them, but there was a good number that were actually loose. Because uh, I thought, you know, on something like that, I was going to have to get my... Well, I did. I got my long Allen keys out. 
I thought I was really going to have to put a bit of force on them to run two of them, but I didn't. Uh, but then again, it is an aluminium case, so you don't want to do them up too tight. I snugged them up when I um, put it all back together. There's a problem with aluminium, you can strip the threads quite easily. So yeah, I just snugged them up. But yeah, it went down the, uh, the bypass, as we call it here, quite nicely. Accelerated well. Yeah, can't complain. It's all working normally, apart from that electric start now. I mean, if it's just a battery, I'll go out and get a battery at some point. I've actually got another battery sitting over at Mum's, but it's too tall because it's one my neighbour gave me a while back. Um, but it's actually for a bigger motorbike, so it's a, a bigger battery. Uh, it would probably fit in the hole, but it's just too tall. Anywho, let's move on. Let's just uh, quickly mention about model railways as well. So, I was actually watching um, a YouTuber called Padshaw Junction this morning. I found his channel quite recently. Um, my friend Cat might actually want to look him up. Because he's just starting to build a, a layout as well, so it might be um, helpful for her. Um, but he, his, the, the video I was watching this morning was um, him fixing a little 040 locomotive that he bought on eBay. He bought it as a, well I was going to say a set, but really it was just a locomotive and three wagons. The track and everything wasn't there. The box was, everything else wasn't. Um, and the locomotive had the problem where the engine would spin spin over nicely but there was no movement um, and he discovered that the gear on the axle just basically wore out so the gear on the motor wasn't meshing with it and wasn't uh, driving the wheels um, surprisingly he did find a gear set for it I didn't think you would be able to but he did find one um, and he uh, you know he took it all apart and got it working but I didn't know you could actually take a little 040 loco apart as far as he did it because you have to take the wheels off and the axle off to get to the gear on the wheels because um, they're not just sat in like they are on bigger locomotives they're press fit so yeah so there's a set but his video actually inspired me to go and get a spare 040 chassis that I had. I threw the body in the bin because that was completely wrecked. It was one that I paid like three quid for at car boot sale last year. It's an old Smoky Joe actually, but yeah. I would love a Smoky Joe, but uh, the body on that one was just, it was crap. It looked crap. It was damaged to hell. So I literally just kept the chassis. <laughs> And after watching this video and seeing how you actually uh, take everything apart, because he was actually learning as he was um, fixing this as well, he had no idea. But yeah, everything there is just press fit. And I've actually got the two little pins there as well, so I don't lose them, for the con rods. I didn't keep the con rods, because they were just too rusty. So I'm guessing that old Smoky Joe had been kept somewhere quite damp. So yeah, I took all that off and kept that, because it's still got a good wheel. The motor is good, I've already tested that. So I've got a good spare motor. Um, there's a little clip for the motor. Uh, <clears throat> we've got which I suppose is the motor cradle. Which I think act, doubles up as a bit of a weight as well. It's got like a plastic insulated thing there for it to sit in as well, like a bushing. Which I actually discovered was loose. I actually thought that was going to be in there, but it's not. And I've actually... Uh, just so I don't lose it, I've put the screw for that in there as well. Because I know what I'm like with screws. I lose them. And I don't think I'll ever need these, but I've got them just in case. The little, uh, the little pickups for it. <clears throat> and I will put these in the cases of small parts I've got in the bedroom. Uh, except the motor. I'm not going to put the motor in there. It's a bit too big. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
I actually want to get this one working because I want the challenge. I want to see if I can actually build this into a working loco because it's got no motor. It's got no. It's got the pickups on the bottom, but there's no wire going to the pickup, so I'd have to solder a new one on. I have got a motor. I just haven't got the um, brushes for it. But you can still get those um, quite plentiful on eBay at the minute. Uh, and the con rods for the wheels. I need to find a set of those. I don't know if I'll find anyone on eBay selling those for an 060 or Hornby 060. Because it'd be so easy to fit. You just got to line your wheels up and line your holes up like that. A little hole in each. And there's literally just a screw in the middle wheel and then there's just a peg that sits in those ones. I have actually got one on another old loco I've got in there which I deliberately took the um, motor out of that one because the body shell's not brilliant and it actually looks perfect. Hang on a minute, I'm going to go and get it. As I was saying, I just thought this looked absolutely perfect to sit on the siding on my um, preserved railway, or heritage railway, that's the other word I've been looking for. That was mentioned um, on Petrol Junction as well, I thought, yeah, that's what, that would be a better name for it, a heritage railway. You know, that just sitting on a siding as a, well, I suppose a parts loco or a pro future project. It's just because it's got that natural wear to it, I think. Uh, but it has got, as you can see on that side, it's got no con rod, but on that side it has got one. So I've got one that will fit the other one. It's just got a little screw in the middle. Um, I just need one more. I haven't got one more. So, uh, yeah. I think this is a jinky, if I remember rightly. Someone's painted up all the brass parts on this to be black for some reason. <laughs> I've just realised, I don't know if it's going to show in this light, because it's crap despite those lights up there. There's literally like a little bit of green on there, right on the front beside the... Um, vacuum hose that looks like a bit of green moss so yeah that I think is going to look will look perfectly um, or go perfectly on a siding on mine so that's why I took the uh, motor out of it so it could roll along but I've just realised I can't pull it along with a shunter because I haven't got no um, couplings on this one. Oh, that's the other thing I've uh, got on eBay and bought a couple of the coupling hooks on the newer Hornby, or for the newer Hornby couplings. Because I've got so many where they're bloody missing, where they've fallen off. So I thought, you know what? I found some that someone 3D prints. He says in the description he 3D prints to order. Um, and he does them in lots of tents. I've ordered two lots, so I've ordered 20. Um, I know the original ones are metal, but plastic ones will bloody work. So long as they work, I don't care what they're made of. This one's only got the rear coupling on it. <clears throat> right. Anyway, moving on. So, I actually bought some uh, Britain's tractors the other day, as you can see. I actually bought one. It was... Well, that one this one I bought that one earlier in the week along with two other items here which I'll show you now so I got that I got that a Bedford crane um, and a Corgi road sweeper which I'll show you in a minute because it's on the floor um, and this had like a, one of them little toolboxes that hang on the back that had fallen off and when it fell off I noticed that got a copper pin in there 
Um, <clears throat> I mean, apart from that, well, the rest of the um, linkage is missing. The rest of the three-point linkage is missing. Which, of course, I didn't see that, and nor did the other guy, because I had the um, toolbox on it. So, I thought, as he put these other five up as a job lot, I'd buy those as well, just for... Uh, I think it was this one. The other one of these, because it's... Well, actually, this one's broken as well, to be honest. I'm saying that phrase again, aren't I? <laughs> this one's missing the um, lever for the three-point linkage, but the rest of it is actually there. And the difference is, this one... Oh no, this one's... No, nope, this one has actually got the lever for the three-point linkage. It's just that the rest of it is missing. <laughs> oh, and this one's got the loose uh, mud guards on it as well. I could glue them in place, that's not a problem. Uh, I'll probably... end up eBaying one of those. Um, so yeah, that's why I went back for the the five that he had, plus what are those? Those are I think they're 66 hundreds. Nope, they're 5,000. Well, that one's a 5,000. I'm going to check this one. Yep, and that's a Ford 5000 as well. So we've got two Ford 5000s there. That one. That one's a 6600. And I have got another one of these. The thing is, this 5000 and that 6600 have got exactly the same cab on. So, would I be right to assume that in real life some tractors, despite being a different model, actually have the same cabs on? And the only difference I can actually see, because all the mud guards and everything else look the same, and there's one difference here with the exhaust, that's in a different position, and it's got uh, slightly bigger back wheels on it. The front wheels are exactly the same. And in fact, those bigger wheels give this um, 6600 more of a sort of a, a drag stance to it. <laughs> anyway, I've got this little one as well. She's looking quite uh, tiny now though, bless it. It's another little Ford, but you can't see the number on the side of it. Oh, it's missing the grill off the front as well. And we've got this one, which I'm pretty certain is also a Ford. It doesn't say on it, but I am pretty certain that's a Ford. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone else knows otherwise. He's had this one um, for a while. I've been tempted by it, but part of the three-point linkage has snapped on the back, which was kind of putting me off, but I'm glad I got it now, because it is a nice little tractor. This one I may end up putting on eBay as well. Little dudes. It's got a bit of a twisted cab there. A chunk of the rear mud guard's gone missing, but it's functional. It's still got all the three-point linkage, and that is all working. So yes, we've got all of those. Let's move those out of the way. Quite a collection of uh, little Britain's tractors there. Um, <clears throat> right, this is another one during the week that I couldn't resist because it's a Bedford. I love these trucks. Love the old Bedford TK trucks. Now, I paid just ten pounds for this one, and. Uh, the seller I got uh, the three um, spares repairs locomotives from, which uh, you're going to see the video of these before this one. <coughs> it's going to go up later today, actually. Um, he also had one of these. Uh, his one is in worse condition this, than uh, mine. I mean, mine's not mint, but it's really not in bad condition for its age. And, look. The hook and the string is all still intact on this one. His one is a lot worse, 
paint wise and the hook is not attached I don't know if it's still got the string I haven't studied the photos that much um, yeah and he's asking uh, 15 quid for his but the reason I got this for £10 is apparently because um, the seat, there's a seat in there which is meant for that top bit you know because you'd sit on that to look at the crane um, but that is just flopping about in there um, which to be fair if it was on display you're not really going to notice it that much so that will be on display when I've made some room because one of them shells is having a load of stuff taken off of it um, I don't use the VCR player so I'm going to get rid of that I don't use that DVD player so I'm going to get rid of that and my youngest brother is having the Xbox 360 because I never use it and I never use the PS3 either so I've got to box both of those up and post them to him so that will actually free up a space there, a shelf there maybe we could actually clear some room over there and do that later maybe it's a definite maybe <laughs> yeah so that'll probably go on that shelf. <laughs> uh, this was the other one that I got off of him during the week. Now, I think I have got a yellow one, but it's very, very scruffy. I can't. Remember. I know I've got two very, very scruffy ones in the box. I just can't remember the card. I think one is a yellow and white one, and I think one is this sort of yellow colour. I think. But this is mint and boxed, and actually still has the uh, the guy in the back there. And the fact this rolls around in there, that isn't fixed to the base, I'm pretty certain someone has actually opened this and perhaps had it out. I mean, I could display it out of the box. Uh, looking at the fact, ow, that was your claws right on my man boob. <laughs> Let me come and lay up here. That's it. Yeah, I have got two other road sweepers in mint condition, but they're not boxed. Um, but one's a dark orange, and one is a yellow and white um, Kent road sweepers. I think that's the Kent one, or is it the orange one? And I'm pretty certain it's the yellow and white one. die cast. <laughs> Some of what's in here wasn't actually part of the punnet. Um, but I'll sh um, tell you what was and what wasn't as we go. So, this is actually one that I found at Mum's. This has nothing to do with it at all. I, if I remember rightly, I bought this from uh, Alsham Car Boot last summer. And I'm guessing it got left at Mum's somehow and she picked it up and put it in a, one of her uh, many junk drawers. And I actually found it yesterday and brought it home. So, what is it? Are you sitting on my magnifying Yeah, you are sitting on my magnifying glass. I'm going to be able to read it because it's ever so shiny. AMC Rebel Machine. It's probably why I bought it in the first place. <laughs> right. So I think, yeah, at least the next six are going to be what um, I bought separately from him. Because when I got there Friday, he had received earlier that day a matchbox, vintage matchbox um, 48 car carry case with I think about 28 matchboxes in. And I well, basically got first dibs out of the box, so got the bus, that was one of them, because I actually don't have this one, it's a super fast, because it's got the super fast wheels on it, right? even with a magnifying glass I can't bloody read it, it's got copyright 1970 on it, it's got the super fast wheels, so that would actually be about right. 
Um, I'm pretty certain. I can't see if it says Setra Coach. Actually, yeah, I think it is Setra Coach. Lesney Products and Co. Limited. Yeah, so that's a Setra Coach. And then we got this. So I'm pretty certain I don't have. And I can't remember what it is. It is... Throwing the magnifying glass around now. A Mont Montverdi H A I. That's number three. And I've got number one here as well. <laughs> so we've got matchbox number one of this series. Whatever series this was, back in the seventies. Mod Rod, number one, 1971. We've got mod rod. Uh, this was also no, that one wasn't. No, yeah, that one was. Sorry, the other one. Okay. Uh, might have better luck reading the other one. But yeah, that's another one that uh, I got out of the case. Um, right, that is it for now, but I know there's some more in here that came out of the case, but the rest... Oh no, one more here that came out of the case that I can get to. The rest are buried in there, so... so that's a Lincoln, Lincoln Continental Mark V. Which I have got, but my other one's got a red blob of paint on the roof, which wasn't done by me, that's how I bought it. So there's another Minter. These are all Minters, by the way. Right. So the next row that I've got in this palette is, um, apart from one, is all part of the palette. So we've got this one. Apparently it's a Dodge Charger of some sort. And yes, this is like the green one I just showed. Well, it's actually the same as the green one I just showed, just as in a different colour. A little chip in the window. That might have been why he uh, put it in this planet. Uh, we've got a super fast Mercedes Benz. I have got a few of these. Oh, this one came out of the um, carry case as well. That's not part of the planet. I'd forgotten about that until now. Yeah, the reason I took this one, despite having four or five of them already, with two different types of wheel on, I've got the super fast version here, but I've also got the older versions that have that style of wheel on. Yeah, the reason I got that is because it is mint. It might not be boxed, but it is mint. And I'm happy with that. Next, we've got the... Uh, this is actually part of the planet, this one. It's just the Impala Taxi. I've got another one of these up on the shelf in the bedroom, which my stepdad restored. So now I've got an original. <clears throat> with a couple of little marks on it. But the taxi sign is still there. So I've got one in original condition, and I've got one um, that's been restored. The one that he restored was actually in way worse shape than this one. That one, I think, is in lovely original condition, so that would get left. I wouldn't uh, restore that one. Right, we've got another one here that came out of the uh, carry case. I'm not sure if I have actually got this one or not. I think I'm thinking of something that looks similar. Who is it? I don't even know what it is. The Blue Shark, number 81. 61? 61. One of those two numbers, you pick. <laughs> right. Here's another one from a Zipanet. Little Opal uh, Diplomat. Yeah. Now, I have got, I think, about three of these in reasonable conditions now. But it is one of my favourite castings of this era. I really do love these. 
this one is probably in the best condition out of all of them. It was one of the reasons when I saw the pun on Marketplace um, why I wanted to buy it. This was another reason because I haven't seen this before. I'm just going to read the base. I've got a few of these in... Um, like a metallic burgundy maroon colour. But this is the... Uh, just read it and forgotten it already. The Freeman Intercity Commuter. So that's it. I've got a few in the burgundy red metallic colour. But I haven't got one in that colour. Well, I have now. <laughs> Didn't even know this one existed. Uh, I have got this little Mercedes. But uh, this one's in way better condition. I don't think the other one's in bad condition, it's just not as good as this one. Right, what else we've got? I'm running out of space on here now. Because I've got a smudge, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see, I'm not a smudge laying there. So we've got an Ertl 18 van as well, that was part of the punnet. Uh, another one, I'll probably put this in the car boot box because. Uh, the tail fins are bent and so are the back wheels, so... And I've got a few of these. Well, I say a few, I've got a couple of them. Um, this one was another one. I think that came out of the uh, carry case. And I have got this, but this one's in the best condition. See, sometimes, if I come across one that's in better condition, that's why I'll buy it. If it's in better condition of one I've already got. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'll either keep both, or I'll just get rid of the other one. Put the other one up for sale. Uh, another Land Rover, which I'll probably end up restoring, because it's missing the uh, luggage bit. And it's actually in, having said that, it's in better shape than the other ones I've got. Uh, I've got a few of these. Um, and I have got one of each with each different number variation on, including the rarer one out of the two. I was so chuffed when I found that one. Um, we've got a Majorette Beetle. In superb condition, actually. <laughs> I can't find a mark on it. Ooh, there's a few on the, um, well, what would be the passenger side on that one, as it's left-hand drive. But other than that, that's a... Uh, Quite a nice little vehicle. <clears throat> now, I'm pretty certain I don't have this one. I'm pretty certain my one has got the blue plastic there and blue interior, not red. But we'll have to check that one. I'm pretty certain. Uh, Lincoln Continental with uh, wheels that I never knew they did. This would be a later release then. Later 70s release. Because I've seen them with the super fast style wheels and I've seen them with the uh, regular wheels. I've been sitting here all afternoon trying to think of that. That's, uh, where is it? That's what Matchbox called those wheels, the regular wheels. So I've got Lincoln Continentals with those on and I've got them with the uh, super fast on, but not these ones. The uh, yes, it has. It's just stuck. <laughs> I think it's got it there. Yeah, it's got the uh, little shutter there, but it's got wedged under the roof. Yeah, it's about the same condition as the other one I've got. Corgi and Husky did a version of that as well. I have got that Citroen, but this one's in far better condition. Uh, same with this, I've got this, but my other one, someone has uh, painted white stripes going down the middle of it, which kind of ruined it. Um, so I'm glad I got that one, otherwise the paintwork is in roughly the same shape as this one. Uh, got Hot Wheels, I think that's a Camaro. Uh, a little Matchbox Beetle, which 
I'm not sure if I'm going to throw that in the car boot box or throw that in my junk box. Simply because both the sets of wheels are bent. I mean, it's restorable. Maybe I could find a set. Oh, those wheels are actually rather worn anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet. And the last one is this one. Which I never knew existed either. Because it is literally just a colour variation of that one. I'd only ever seen this one. <laughs> Didn't know this one existed. And that is in near enough mint condition from the looks of it. Glass windows in good shape. A little bit of hazing on the tampo work, on the red tampo work. Just a little bit of a crazing on that, but other than that, it's a good little car. I think I prefer it in that white colour to the um, bronze colour. Right, I'm just going to stick these back in here. They will go into the kitchen later and... Uh, well, actually, if I put the matchboxes in first and keep the Hot Wheels and the Maisto... Maisto... Majorette separate... Um, I'll just put the Maisto... I said it again, I can't believe that. I put the Majorette and the Hot Wheels in their other tubs. Because I've been sort... I had so many tubs of unsorted loose die cast that I'd built up over the last sort of two or three months. I thought it was about time I saw them and put them into their correct tubs under the bed. So I'd have a bit of space. That one I was going to sell, wasn't I? So there's no point putting that one back in there. Uh, let's put the rest of these in here then. We do plan to keep them. Probably will keep that beetle. Smudge is looking at me ever so disgusted. <laughs> like, why are you doing that right in front of my face, Dad? Because I haven't got anywhere else to do it. And I was actually at the desk before you were. I did get these the other day as well. Oh, fuck. What are they? Night burners. And you get uh, the Alpha Pursuit, 89 Mazda, uh, Savannah RX7 FC35, the 98 Honda Prelude, a Datsun 620. And that is a McLaren Speedtail. So I've got those to put in as well. Right. For now, that is it for diecast. Well, I still have one item that I want to show you that I can't remember if I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But, uh, I was on eBay again, and I was actually just browsing for, well, like I normally do beacons and barricade lamps and whatnot. I came across this. That is actually a beacon that was used on some uh, vintage fire trucks back in the day. Uh, in fact, if you do a Google image search, search, when I actually pronounce my words correctly, of a green goddess, you will actually find some photos of at least a couple there that got this very beacon on the cab. And actually, I was on Facebook yesterday, and in my feed, because I'm on a few um, like fire engine groups on Facebook, in my feed I did come across a photo that someone had posted to one of these groups of a uh, old Bedford turntable ladder that actually had one of these beacons on the roof. Um, it is working. It says 24 volt, but it's working perfectly fine. Um, on 12. I can show you that. 
if smudge isn't going to get in the way too much that is. Uh, I know what I can do. I'll put that up there and I'll put the power supply in front of it. That's the wrong black and yellow wire. It doesn't matter, I just can't be bothered to uh, get the ends bared. So. One wire in there. Got to turn off at the wall. I did, so I've got to turn that on. Got to turn that on. I'll make sure we're all in shot, so you can see. Oh, it's done that. Where it starts up and uh, and the power supply sort of starts up. And as soon as I touch the lamp. Our supplier uh, cuts off. So it's not liking something here, is it? I don't think it likes me attaching the wires that particular, particularly, particular. Holy crap. <laughs> um, way around, so I'm just going to twist this one on here. Don't know if it's this particular connector though, it's got a bit of dirt on it or something. Well, Turn that back on, that should reset itself. Yeah, the fan is on. Yeah, if I connect the wires that way around, twist that on, it works. It's a bit noisy because it is direct drive, so the motor is directly connected to the reflector with a couple of gears rather than a belt. But I don't see nothing wrong with that. I think if I put 24 volts to this, I'd have blown that bulb. So I bet that's a 12 volt bulb on there. 12 volt halogen bulb as well. Mind you, on 24 volts, it might spin faster. I bet all that someone's done is just to convert it, it's just put a 12 volt bulb in there rather than a 24 volt. These wires get warm to touch, but not overly warm, isn't it? There's nothing there to worry about. But then again, when you think about it, that's a 55 watt halogen bulb in there and a motor. That's quite a bit of a current draw on that. So it's working now. Main Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just a power supply that throws a hissy fit sometimes. And yeah, I don't even know what model or who the maker is of this. I can't see nothing on it. It's just got a sticker there. Um, cod. Oh, hang on. What I'm doing with magnifying glass, I think there is some sort of name on it. I might be able to Google it. Or on some of these groups, I might even be SEV, and there's a dot between each of those letters, letters. Marshall. Got a whiff of something very hot there. A little bit worrying. Well, all the wiring in this looks um, original, to, to be fair. Yeah, it's got 24 volt written on this toys. Something ref, I can't quite make that out. C-O-D-I-F, it's got that number, whatever that is. Is it this I can smell, or is that the...
Do not stand on my power button. So I keep getting a whiff of something like very, very hot. I can't find anything very, very hot at the minute. Could just be some. Ah, it's the motor on this I can smell. That's what it is. Just a hot motor. My job would probably be hot as well if I hadn't been used for a while. Right, I think. I think that is it. I'm just trying to. I think if I need anything at Sainsbury's before they close at four o'clock. I can't think of anything. No, I can't think of anything. What have you seen on the floor? I might actually make a video for the gaming channel this afternoon, ready for tomorrow. Yeah, for those that didn't know, I have actually got a, um, a gaming channel now, English Gamer 38. Started it a few months ago, and uh, the videos that seem to be doing the best are the My Garage videos. But she's had quite an adventure for the last video. Tried to drive uh, one of the cars to the junkyard and ended up crushing that like 200 yards from the garage. So I went and got another vehicle, drove that all the way to the junkyard and I was returning from the junkyard to the garage. Got to the spot where I crashed the first car and nearly crashed the second one. I swear that particular spot is jinxed. Actually, I don't know how I did end up in the drink with that car, to be honest. The second one. It was close. It was very, very close. How I saved it and how I got out of that, I don't know. It uh, certainly brightened up what I would have considered an otherwise a boring video. I can't grammar. I seem to be struggling with my speech today for some reason. Right. What I will do is just finish editing up uh, the, vi uh, the the loco video repair. I'm trying to repair these. Well, I suppose I can tell you in this video because, like I said, you're seeing this one, or you will see this one, the railway video that is before um, this video. So I really am struggling, aren't I, today? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. You're going to see the locomotive video before this one, is what I was trying to say. Oh. Yeah, I've got one of the three working. This one is possible, if I can find the parts. It is possible. It's missing the con rods off the wheels. I have actually got one, so technically I would just need one more. So I've got one on this old steamer here. I mean, in theory, I could actually get this one running as well. I've just realised it's exactly the same chassis. And I can't find a screw that's holding this together. There's got to be one. I just can't find it. But really all I'd want off of this and what I might actually pinch off of it is that conrod on that side. It's missing on that side. Now the reason I left this one like it is, even though I could potentially get it up and running, because I have got two spare motors. I've got a spare motor that I can shove in that one. I just need to get some brushes for them. 
I want to use this one on the layout down one of the sidings on the Heritage Railway. Um, just because I think it looks so much the part of, you know, a loco awaiting restoration or being used as spare parts, something like that. So, that's pretty much why I left it. <laughs> and I'm not sure why the Conrod is missing on the side facing me. I really don't know why. I'm sure this had to. The other problem is, if I do find the Conrods, I've got to hope they come with a screw. Because I ain't got any of those screws, I don't think. But yeah, essentially I could just take that Conrod off and put it on the uh, pannier tank. So I would like to uh, actually get that one up and running as well. Try and find a bloody screw for these bodies, I've got to find a little screw. Well, I did get the other pannier tank running, excuse me. That's all running fine. Although the brushes don't match. One's brand new and the other one isn't. But it works. Um, but what I will do, as I do want to get some spare brushes anyway, at some point I'll order several and uh, several pairs and uh, change them later. Put an actual pair in there. I did have a pair, but uh, as you will see in that video, I broke one. I still haven't found it. I have no idea where that flew off to. And I've never had any success in reattaching the brush to the brass plate anyway, so... Right. I'm going to end the video here then, because... I want to get that video recorded for the uh, gaming channel and I've got some die cast to sort out and uh, all that wonderful stuff. I suppose I should put these beacons up on the shelf because I've still got the hella one on the floor as well. Now Smudge has got to lay down on, the, on a dirty t-shirt and dirty towel in the hallway. There's a basket full of clean laundry around the place and he chooses the dirty laundry. Mind you, Nemo used to do exactly the same thing, and Mum said it's probably to do with the um, scent, because it's got my scent on it. Right. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Um, as I always do, as I haven't forgotten yet, <laughs> uh, I will put links to the gaming channel and the LEGO channel that I have in the description down below. And... I will also link to uh, my Discord server, so feel free to check those out and maybe subscribe. And if you do check out the Discord, come and have a chat. There's usually, um, I'd say, about half a dozen of us that are chatting there at the minute. Um, yeah, something else I was going to say as well, and I've just completely gone. Uh, yeah, Alright, so uh, I guess I will uh, see you in the next video, which will probably be... Um, a model railway related video. We're going to be um, servicing up some 040 locos, I think. Well, I say some. I've got about 14 of them, so... <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.